just popped in for a few minutes. I got to to another conference call, so I apologize for just coming in late. How y'all doing? Good, good. How you doing? Yeah, super. All right. Well, uh, last thing about the defense, Coach, um, safeties look like we're pretty set, right? Uh, I don't think we're going to have too much of a, a change back there. Don't know if Eric Harris is going to make the team or not, but he surely is uh, showing up at times for the New Orleans Saints. Um, but <clears throat> how, how do you feel right now about the entire defensive backfield? Well, they're, they're better than they were a year ago. So uh, that's that's encouraging. And, I mean, I can hear people are saying, well, it wouldn't take much to be better than they were last year. But, uh, they, you know, they – but I think they've been successful in uh, in upgrading the personnel. Uh, and the key to that, in my mind, is Jarris Bird. Jarris Bird has gotten uh, some meaningful snaps in the preseason so far. And uh, with the uh, revelation today that the starters were going to uh, begin the game this uh, tomorrow night, uh, I, I don't know if that carries over to defense or not, but it in any case, it's been encouraging to see Jairus Bird on the field and playing because they need so he Jairus Bird needs to be Jairus Bird mm -hmm. if things are going to fall into place uh, for this defense. Uh, Vaughn Bell is going to be able to contribute, but uh, he's he's a long way from uh, really being a uh, a second round type of effective player, especially someone that you traded up for mm. and once again my indication if if you if somebody uses two draft choices to move up and take somebody you better turn out to be a really good player and we've got some indication with Vaughn Bell but at 21 years old he's still really developing uh Roman Harper is showing that if he's used in the right place there's some capability there uh and Kenny Vaccaro uh, is playing with some some speed and is much more like he was his rookie year. And he had talked about uh, a week ago uh, when he met with the, the media that he felt he was in much, much better condition. That ankle injury he had in his second year has, has affected Vaccaro for not just uh, uh, not just the remainder of that year when he was out, but that whole next year. He was never really as fit as he needs to be to play at an elite level, but he certainly feels like he's at that point now. So, uh, Jairus Bird has got to play like Jairus Bird can play. Kenny Vaccaro has got to regain his energy and form. And then the other safeties have got to be able to fit in around those two it does give them some versatility and i'm i'm certainly encouraged by eric harris and what he's capable of doing and the fact that he is uh the starting personal protector on the punt team hmm. i think is important because they uh you know they're not going to put somebody there uh they want to put somebody there that's going to make the team mm -hmm. they don't want to spend time teaching him and having him uh, learn and communicate with the rest of the punt team and their pass protection and coverage calls, especially they don't want to practice with somebody who's not going to make the team. And the two guys there are, uh, are Harris with Lasco starting as a gunner. And then with the second person protect, they take Lasco and put him inside and make him the personal protector. So I think that that's uh, encouraging for them. Uh, and, uh, I think with Harris, he has the size uh, at six three, two and a quarter, and at twenty six years old. Even though he only this is his first year in the NFL, uh, he's got the physical maturity to be able to play multiple positions uh, defensively. He can be a guy that uh, plays out in space deep. He's shown the ability to be able to do that. He can pair with either Vaughn Bell or he can pair with Jairus Bird so that you have two uh, safeties that can play out in space, so to speak. But I think Harris also has the ability to play closer to the line of scrimmage, either as a slot or nickel corner, uh, perhaps even, and I haven't 
seen any evidence of this, but I thought that when they had acquired him, that he could be uh, that dime uh, inside linebacker type that we're seeing a little more prevalent in the league, trying to take uh, safety type people mm. and make in, in a four two uh, five type of type of look. And that's how you can get into dime by putting uh, a safety type person at that uh, other inside linebacker. Uh, I haven't seen any evidence of that. Maybe I'm just wishing. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I think he I think he, he he's you could see him playing a relevant part uh, in this defense. Uh, now I hope this isn't the kiss of death for him, but I think he's I think he's got some real ability to be able to play. Okay, good, good. Um, I see you, Rim. How you doing? Hey, man, I'm okay. How you do? I'm doing well, fellas. How's it going? How's good. it going? I, I I caught the last bit of what Coach was saying. Hey, man, I hope you I hope you're right on everything. Uh, I was at that misery this past week. <laughs> Uh, Ooh, that hurt. There. Yeah, it hurt like, oh, man, I'm still feeling it. Well, yeah. I was fortunate that Ken Trahan and I got the broadcast of West Bank Optimus Jamboree last Friday. Okay. So I only got to see it in replay when I got uh, got back to the house after we were watching uh, Eric and, uh, and Cox and uh, and West Jefferson and, and Higgins uh, play last night, uh, that particular night. So I was in a much better mood when I got home than I'm. Uh, I believe you were. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure you were, man. It was like uh, you know, y'all know I love to antagonize um, opposing fans, and I came in the dome ready. I was messing with them all. They moved down the field. They start swinging their towels. I told them put the towels down, and then they did it again. And I said, you know what? I'll just let them swing their towels tonight. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just pre, it's just preseason. <laughs> I, I don't think you had much choice, Remy. I, I, I couldn't say a word. Man. Yeah, I could swing the towels. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And Brendan, that, that, I see that, you. That my nachos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome, Brendan. I see you in the queue as well, man. How you doing? I'm good. You know, things are back. Uh back in the swing here at Gardner Webb, so it's going to get harder and harder to be able to join you guys because they have me traveling all over the place, and I'm doing game notes every single day, it seems like, uh, doing play-by-play work, but uh, it's good to be here. Good, good. Coach, Remy, and Professor, Brendan, tell them how many sports and games you are calling for Gardner Webb. Well, you know, you and I talked uh, just yesterday, and I told you I got word Friday that I'm now the full-time football radio guy here, so I'm traveling uh, for all 11 games at Gardner-Webb, but I'm calling nine collegiate sports at Gardner-Webb University, so um, I'm pretty busy. I got volleyball tomorrow at 7 o'clock, and then Saturday at 3.30, we're in Elon for the uh, for the opener for football, so nine collegiate sports, including it looks like football and men's basketball full time. Wow! Well, well, man, that's a great problem to have, man. Outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, hey, we all want you to do well. I know you're going to be exceptional at what you're doing for the college. Uh, don't forget the studies. That's all I say. <laughs> I hear you. I'm sure my parents will let me hear it, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, congratulations, Brendan, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you still with us. Uh, I know you're going to pop in every now and then, but, uh, guys, be sure you watch out for this young man. He's going to be something special in the years to come, I tell you. So, Professor, uh, you've been pretty quiet for a change, um, so – any uh, last thoughts about the defense? But don't start nothing, Kyle. If, you know, <laughs> we're already in a, a bad mood after this fiasco on, um, last week. Uh, no, with the defense, I just have a um, red flag. I was It was encouraging to hear what um, uh, Coach Dad said. I'm like, Remy, I, I hope Dad is right because <laughs> – what happened on that last preseason game did not leave me very encouraged about um, the Saints um, um, at all. Um, 
I just let's just hope that the team surprises us and um the pass rush was the area that was very alarming to me or the lack of a pass rush that stood out to me. Um and I know Paul Kruger has been brought in now and the other guy, Chuck um I can't remember his name that they brought in from Miami. Uh, I just hope some of these players, these free agents that they brought in can can work out and help out and I just also would be glad when Sheldon Rankin get back. And so let's just hope that they can some kind of way manage to win three out of these first four games before the season gets hard if the defense can, you know, kind of do what it did in the first two previous games. And you have to also remember they played an elite offense um, in the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, and yeah, so they, won't, they did. They won't have that many Pittsburgh Steelers type offenses on this schedule. So let's hope not. We'll see. Let's, let's hope, hope not. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Saints did trade for Chris McCain uh, out of uh, the Dolphins camp. He's another Cal graduate, uh, or, well, from the program, I would say. Uh, the Saints traded for a conditional seventh rounder. Uh, Let's see if he's able to bring any spark. Coach or Brendan, any thoughts about McCain? Have you guys noticed anything or heard anything about him? No, no. The the thing that uh, I've heard uh, about him, uh, let me see, let me let me get let me get to my notes here. Uh, no, I had I, I really not not that much about wow. McCain. But once again, <laughs> when you when you're looking at a defensive lineman. And uh, the Dolphins do have some good defensive linemen. So unlike uh, the Cleveland Browns uh, giving up on somebody, uh, as they did on Kruger, uh, that is indeed uh, someone that perhaps that they had uh, some better players, but he could still be, he could still be effective. So uh, you know, if you're giving somebody up for a conditional seventh-round pick, you're saying, look, he's not going to make our team maybe – he could luck out and get uh, and make something with the Saints, and uh, we pick up something for him. Okay, good, good. All right, guys, uh, the Saints brought in offensive lineman Khalif Barnes, and he's going to be penciled in as one of the guards, or he can play tackle as well. So let's talk about this offense, which to me is the most concerning area of the New Orleans Saints. And like you said earlier, Coach, we got word that Sean Payton decided he's going to have all of his starters participate on Thursday night against the Ravens. Uh, That means Drew Brees will be out there, which I'm cringing at, you know, um, especially the way this offensive line has been performing. But I guess he would like to see how this offensive line can be able to uh, gel together. Uh, Remy, how how do you feel about hearing Drew Brees will be out there one more time, especially in a preseason game? I am so worried about that. Uh, we, As we all know, man, fourth game of the preseason, your starters are usually on the bench the whole game. You know, that's the game where you guys who um, have to worry about whether or not they're going to be um, you know, on the final roster usually play. So for our starters to be out there, uh, it's it's really scary, uh, especially our starting quarterback. Um, this, I, I'm hoping that it's maybe um, if, if it's like no more than one or two series and then sit them down, um, sit everybody down. Uh, the, the, we have enough problems with the offense healthy. So I don't, you know, I don't want to risk going into a, a game with somebody, you know, possibly being injured. I mean, think if we have an injury on that, on that offensive line or, you know, what are we going to do then? Right, right. If that's, the, if that's the best we have, the best we have is um, giving us two yards of carry. What are we going to get with a replacement? Definitely. We have to be praying who that nation, please be on your knees for Drew Brees. That's well, the I best thing am. I can I say. Man. I'm on my knees right now. Yeah, look, man, yeah. It, it, it's going to be interesting. And I, I, I feel he will come through it. But, you know, you brought up a good point. The offensive line is making a lot of transitions. Sean Payton went out and told the media again that 
Andrus Pete will be sweet.